You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Introducing the Torah or the Pentateuch Torah and Pentateuch are two names from two traditions for the same collection of books They also have another common name the Five Books of Moses or the Books of Moses but those names are common to both traditions and we'll come back to them later The Jewish name Torah the word that means instruction, teaching or law lays focus on the role of these books since Judaism became so centered on mitzvot, rules, the meaning law has tended to predominate but probably in ancient times the meaning instruction or teaching was the, the one that was uppermost in people's minds the Greek name Pentateuch simply means five books, the Pentateuchos and the Torah or the Pentateuch has as far as we can tell always been a five book unit despite scholarly speculation with suggestions of a hexateuch including Joshua or a tetrateuch knocking off Deuteronomy and both of those suggestions have some merit to them in scholarly terms neither of them have any evidence historically to support them and the five books are fairly clearly a unit the plot leads on from one to the next in fact at times you wonder whether the divisions between them are somewhat arbitrary to fit the scrolls except perhaps in the case of Deuteronomy which restarts and recapitulates what's been said before and yet going back to that suggestion of a four book a tetrateuch unit could such a unit end with the end of numbers? wouldn't that lay far too much stress on the importance of law to the Torah? certainly a, a hexateuch, a six book unit could end quite nicely with the end of Joshua but that wasn't what the authors of the Bible wanted the ending of Joshua is perhaps altogether too triumphal and didn't suit the writers of the Bible the bones of Joseph which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt were buried at Shechem in a portion of ground that Jacob had bought from the children of Hamor father of Shechem for one hundred pieces of money and it became an inheritance for the descendants of Joseph with the slight anticlimax of the waffle about Eliezer son of Aaron in the next sentence by the way it couldn't last and the writers of the Bible made sure that we had judges to follow and disabuse us of any notions of triumphal heroes now, the obvious unit is the Pentateuch which ends with the death of Moses this underlines both how central Moses is to this work and as David Klein's noticed many decades ago now how the promises to the patriarchs though on the way to fulfillment are still at the end of the Pentateuch not yet and too, ending with a recapitulation of the law stresses also its importance over against many Christianizing readings that try to minimize the significance of law so what is the Torah or the Pentateuch? I wonder if the best uh, starting point for thinking about that isn't the Maori concept of whakapapa the sort of genealogy that tells you who you are by telling you where you came from Certainly, the frame and much of the contents of the Torah is narrative it's a story that begins with creation and ends with the death of Moses on the verge of Jordan and in between we hear about ancestors, about calling, about promise and fulfillment we hear of a broken world of oppression and of liberation and amongst it all we hear of law commands, mitzvot, to be obeyed and in asking what the Torah is we Christians should certainly not too quickly run past the law rules to live by which generate habits of holiness to use Conrad Gemp's rather useful phrase are really significant in defining a people compare again Maori culture with its concepts of tapu and noah and perhaps you get a glimpse of the significance and importance of all of those lists of clean and unclean animals in Leviticus and the like and that's what the Pentateuch is it's a five book unit which like Whakapapa tells us who we are and where we came from and which tells us the rules which God's people obeyed in order to be and to become a holy people a people set apart for God Almighty Christians have never quite worked out what to do with the Torah but Jesus was quite clear not one word, not one letter, not one stroke of a pen will pass away what we do with that is a really interesting theological puzzle for 21st century Christians but then Jesus liked leaving us with puzzles to think about
Bye for now.